Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are going to talk about streaming, the internet, gaming, being online in general and what kind of impact that has on the environment because everything that we do Every single action we take has some sort of impact. That might seem demotivating, but honestly for me it's a constant reminder that we can always learn, we can always do better, and that's all this video series is about, learning about the impact of materials that we use every day and how we can improve and how we can do it in the most conscious way possible. So let's get down to business and defeat the Huns. No, okay, cool. So the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I started my Zero West journey about five or six years ago at this point, which has been a long time in the making so old but the zero waste movement has been and to some extent is still today very focused on physical trash and I totally get that because physical trash is really really important it's also a very visual marker of what's going on because it becomes almost symbolic right like for instance the straw the plastic straw is very symbolic of plastic pollution although there's so much more to plastic pollution than just this one thing and that's sort of what I think sometimes that physical waste is in general, it becomes the symbol of an underlying structure which is generally not working very well. And I love talking about zero waste and ways to minimize your physical trash. I still think it's super important, but there are also other things that are equally as important. And sometimes I might also argue more important. Um, so today we're going to talk about streaming and uh, I'm really excited to do this. Also, simply just Disclaimer, I am criticizing a lot of things that I benefit from. I have been doing that in other videos as well. And I think that's super, super important because just because you benefit from something, for instance, I work online, hello. So without the internet, I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but I still think it's super important to be able to reflect upon the structures on which you are dependent and generally be critical of the things that we surround ourselves with. So even though I do benefit from the internet, I still think there's tons of things wrong with it and tons of things I want to change and tons of things I want to bring into the light and criticize and generally just show you guys, talk about, we'll reflect together. Okay, let's get into this now. Yes. Cool. So generally you can divide the impact of being online into two categories. The first being production and shipping. Because before we are allowed to be online, we need a device to gain access, right? So that is everything from cameras and cell phones and laptops and all the electronic devices you can think of that has some something to do with being plugged in, being online, those have to be made somewhere and those have to be shipped all around the world. Generally, it's estimated that one single smartphone requires around 230 kilos of raw materials to use. And all of these materials are mined. We've been talking about mining in all the other videos as well, because what you do when you mine, you take a lot of raw material from the ground and a lot of that is going to be waste because you're looking for specific minerals and that disrupts ecosystems and habitat for animals and plants and that generally has a very, 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 very large impact. Um, so whenever we mine something, whenever we produce something with minerals, it generally has an impact. Then there's production of these items, that's also really significant because most of them are produced in sweatshops or the like, generally people working very, very low wages, um, which is also uncool. Not necessarily an environmental thing, but definitely an ethical thing that we should take into account. And then there's shipping. Generally, it's estimated that transportation or CO2 emissions from transportation accounts for about 12 to 15% of a product's overall carbon footprint. So it's still kind of significant because every piece of electronic device that we own, every cord, every plug, every device, everything has to be shipped. And then there is, of course, the way we discard electronics. We have never discarded so many electronic devices as during the last 20 years. E-waste or electronic waste is the fastest fastest growing category of waste last year and it is today as well. It's estimated that only 1% of all smartphones are recycled and generally it accounts for a lot of waste that we don't really know what to do with. It requires a lot of resources to take it all apart which makes it expensive and if it's expensive you have to pay workers more than nothing to do it. The procedures with which we recycle our e-waste today is enormously faulty and the amount of electronic devices that we are discarding are so vast that no system is able to keep up with it. So the first category being manufacturing, shipping, brackets and recycling has a really, really large impact on the environment. 
but there is another category which is cooling and powering and that's something that's almost completely invisible to the average consumer when we go online we think of the internet as something almost invisible like it's a cloud it's just something that is above all of us and that connects us but actually the internet is a very physical thing what powers the internet are data centers and data centers are situated all over the world in 2012 it was estimated that there were about 500,000 data centers in the world so that's probably gone up from 2012 and all of these data centers require powering and cooling think about how your electronic devices can sometimes heat up or even overheat well that happens at data centers as well constantly all the time and in order to avoid them overheating and thus shutting down the internet or different platforms there is constant air conditioning constant cooling systems in place to make sure that does not happen and the problem with these sort of installments is that most of them run on fossil fuels that's where the impact is so we have more than half a million data centers many of them run completely on fossil fuels which is in no way shape or form a sustainable option a 2015 report actually found that data centers consumption of fossil fuels accounts for 2% of all global CO2 emissions and that makes the internet just as polluting as plane travel. Constantly being online, streaming, gaming, whatever we do, it requires a lot of energy. Usually when we are streaming our favorite movie, our favorite show, or listening to music or gaming with friends online, we're not thinking about that as something that requires energy or that produces waste in any sort of way. But every time we stream something, we are dependent upon a thing that is physical somewhere in the world. When we want to watch a show or a movie, we're dependent upon a raw file that is actually stored somewhere. And streaming that file is going to require energy. The Independent reported in 2016 that data centers will consume three times as much energy as they're currently doing over the course of the next decade. And they already account for more electricity use than the entirety of the United Kingdom. However, this industry is actually changing. In 2016, a report showed that sustainability was on the bottom of most data center suppliers lists, whereas in 2018, it was the fourth most pressing issue. In 2017, Greenpeace also published the Click Clean report, which shows how different websites and streaming platforms are doing on their account of sustainability. You can actually go in and see which streaming platform is the most sustainable. The sustainability effort is measured depending on the platform's innovation and energy sources and data storage and you can find out how Netflix, YouTube, HBO among others are scoring on this test and I will leave it down below if you're interested in seeing any of these stats. But there is of course tons of things that we can do to become more sustainable and more conscious internet users. The first one being being less online. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say it because it's such an obvious thing. If you're just looking for something to do, then reading a book, going outside, exercising, cleaning your apartment, doing anything else than watching or binge watching specifically a movie or a show is a really good idea. In my life, I have watched countless movies and shows where I wasn't invested, I wasn't passionate about watching it, I wasn't even interested and I never for a second thought about how that actually had a negative impact on the planet. Never in a million years. So now I've sort of made it my deal to only watch things that I'm actually interested in, that I actually want to watch, instead of just having something, just whatever going on in the background. Which brings me to point number two. If you're watching something, watch it. I have also been super bad at just having things in on in the background, sort of like background noise, just whilst I've been going around doing other things. If there's something you really, really want to watch, you can also watch it with other people. I'm feeling this doing a self-quarantine, so that's not really something that you should be doing right now. But once the dust has settled and we're back to normal, watching something with other people rather than watching it yourself is also a really good idea. Especially if you know a lot of people who are into the same shows and movies, then it's better and more environmentally friendly to watch that thing on one device rather than each of you watching the same thing on multiple devices. So that's something you can consider as well. It's a very, very small thing, but in the long haul, it has a lot of impact. So is it better to buy a DVD or a CD rather than streaming it? 
No. A report from 2014 showed that the environmental impact of producing DVDs and CDs are still higher. But that does not mean that you cannot use CDs and DVDs anyway. I'm using tons of CDs and DVDs that I already have and that I've had for years and years and years. You can also borrow them from other people or at your library or buy them secondhand or from thrift shops. There are tons of other things you can do that is not going out and buying new DVDs or CDs. But generally going out and buying new DVDs and CDs is sort of the same thing as buying a really expensive canvas bag or like a really fancy reusable bag. Using it only once like you would a plastic bag has a huge impact on the environment and it's no way sustainable. But over time that thing becomes more and more sustainable because you're using it a lot of times. So for instance my old Disney movies which I love and watch all the time they have definitely earned their right as a sustainable item because I've had some of them for more than 10 years and I've watched them so many times that at this point they are more sustainable than watching them or streaming them online. You feel, but going out and buying everything that you love uh, as new DVDs or CDs is not the way to go. You can also find out which sites are more environmentally friendly than others. A lot of the impact from streaming comes from how data centers are powered and cooled. And in the Click Clean report, you can actually see how Netflix are scoring, how, how HBO is scoring, and how tons of other streaming platforms are doing in terms of sustainability. And then you can pick the one that is the most eco-conscious. You can also clean out your cloud. I used to have tons of documents and pictures that I never used and never looked at and never did anything with, just stored in drop boxes all over the cloud. And over the years, I have sort of made it my deal to only store things in the cloud that are really, really important, like my lease and contracts and stuff that, you know, matters a lot. But just pictures and everyday normal blogger stuff I am storing on a secondhand hard drive that I have like an external hard drive. So I'm not storing any of these things in the cloud. I have them on this device instead. You can also use USB drives if you just want to store a small amount of things for a short while. These can honestly be found in so many thrift shops because people are just discarding them. I mean, what is earth even? And then you can find... What is this? Am I a cosplayer? <laughs> Have you seen this? Woo! I, I don't know. Okay, so... But you can also find an environmentally conscious search engine. Um, I'm using Ecosia because they plant trees every time that you use their services, which is really, really cool. I'll leave the link down below. They're not even sponsoring this video. I'm just plugging them because they are great. Um, so using a different search engine can also have a nice impact. These are just some of the things that you can take into account as an internet user. It does not mean, obviously, that you cannot use the internet ever. You cannot stream or game or do anything ever. But it's about being mindful with our resources. And whenever we do use these services, they should matter. So if you are watching something, make sure to watch it, pay attention. Um, if you can, try to binge watch less and do other things, like engage in other activities as well. It's just something to be mindful of and also it's a great excuse to not sit down and watch TV every single day all the time and especially in these times where we're sort of inside a lot. This is something that really motivates me to get up and do something else because I know it's not only bad for me uh, just to sit and watch something on hours and hours on end, it's also bad for the environment. Um, so it's sort of become like a motivating factor for me to do this. But as I said, if you are watching, if you are streaming, I mean, you are streaming right now because you're watching my videos, hello, um, and thank you for watching. It does not mean that you cannot do that ever. It just means that we need to be mindful with how we use, well, yeah, everything. <laughs> I hope that you liked this video and it gave you some perspective and something to reflect upon. That is all I wanted to do. We should always be critical of the things that we like and we use and we love. And because otherwise, what are we? So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have an amazing day and take care of yourself and stay safe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!